Speedway Report is produced and broadcast by the Zeus Radio Network for Racers Reunion Radio. NASCAR's National Series concluded their seasons with their championships at Miami. The Brazilian Grand Prix delivered a dandy of a race. And the difference between those two? Well, it gives an example of what I love and what I think is a farce. <clears throat> All this and more. Buckle up. Welcome to Speedway Report for Monday, November the 18th, 2019. From the shores of Lake Norman in Race City, USA, Mooresville, North Carolina, I'm Patrick Reynolds. And thank you for joining the fastest half hour in racing. Have you subscribed to our YouTube channel? Got all these beautiful podcasts up in the world of YouTube. Feel free to hop on along. If you miss one, it'll just dump it right in your inbox. Never miss another Speedway Report. That's a great way to go through the rest of your life, isn't it? Yes. Yes, it is. Let's look at the Speedway Report victory lane lap. We go through mid-November. Big NASCAR championship weekend. Uh, big ending for the NHRA. Let's talk. NASCAR's Monster Energy Cup Series raced in Miami last night. Kyle Busch was the winner of the race and the championship. <clears throat> and the Xfinity cars, Tyler Reddick on Saturday went 300 miles. He won the race and the championship. The trucks raced on Friday night after a bit of a rain delay. Austin Hill won the race. Matt Crafton won the title with a second place finish. In Formula One yesterday in Brazil, Max Verstappen won the historic Grand Prix there. NHRA was in Pomona, California for their championship round. Doug Kalitta was your winner. Steve Torrance, your champion. In Funny Car, Jack Beckman won the ladder. Robert Height, your 2019 NHRA Funny Car champ. In Pro Stock, Jake Coughlin won the ladder. But Erica Enders joins Shirley Muldowney and Angel Sampi as three-time female champions in NHRA. Pro Stock Motorcycle, Gianna Salinas won the ladder. Andrew Hines is the season champion. USAC Sprints ran in Santan Valley, Arizona on Friday and Saturday, but I only need one name. Tyler Courtney swept the A-Main both nights out there. And an update on uh, the North-South shootout from last weekend. Well, they raced it at Hickory. Burt Myers apparently won, crossed the line first. Uh, during the week, though, his tires were disqualified. It disqualified him because of some illegal funny business there. They didn't pass Tech. Second place winner, second place finisher Andy Sice is now the winner of the 2019 North-South shootout. So where do we go from here? Uh, could talk about Steve Torrance being a little bit of a bully. Uh, he looked a lot like Joey Logano did a few weeks ago in Martinsville with the push in the run out in uh, Pomona, California. Uh, I didn't care for it too much. Not a big deal. A little bit of a whiner there. He was the champ uh, in top fuel this year, or he, he clinched it by the semifinals. Uh, so good for him. However, you don't get to act like that. I took Logano to task a few weeks ago. I'll take Torrance to task tonight. You're going to stand there and shove somebody or put your fist in your face? Uh, stay there. Don't run away. Don't hide behind other people and expect them all to break up or leave. Don't take the parting shot and then walk away. You want to put your hands on somebody, stay there and take it like a man. Logano didn't, neither did Torrance. I called Logano out for being a puss move. I called Torrance on. Puss move, Fit, flat hand to the face, and then you walk away. Yeah, just because you're a, sta uh, a little whiner on the staging lanes in top fuel. Uh, if you want to talk, yell, complain, that's fine. You lay your hands on somebody, it's go time. Torrance, you should have stayed. You should have took your medicine. Yeah, you apologize for it later, much like Lagana, but in the heat of the moment, you want to be a tough guy, be a tough guy. Uh, Reminds me of guys on the internet that uh, have the keyboard. They're keyboard warriors. Got the internet, social media muscles, face-to-face. -face, not too much to talk about. Logano with a puss move. Torrance with a puss move. Um, I don't know. We can beat this like a dead horse. I want to get to my real dead horse tonight. Logano, thumbs down. Torrance, thumbs down. You guys know how I felt about this. We went over it a few weeks ago. I go over this one I'm about to every few weeks, and this Monday, 
after Homestead every year. I go after it heavily. Ah, where do we begin? Well, I'm going to be begin with Lewis Hamilton and uh, the Brazilian Grand Prix. We're going to start there, jump to NASCAR, and then come back to Brazil. Lewis Hamilton secured the world championship uh, at the last race in Austin, Texas. I thought it was cool that the F1 title was decided on American soil. Now, we go to Brazil, one of the most historic tracks, racing history in all of Formula One, with the Brazilian heritage. As far as the world championship go, Hamilton was already had already clinched the title with two races to go. If you're a couch potato like me yesterday, you got to see the Brazilian Grand Prix. You had a little bit, bit of a break, and then the NASCAR Cup championship was decided in Miami with the four-way tie playoff system. Uh, Hamilton, as I say, contrasts that by clinching the world championship with two races to go. What do we prefer? I prefer the Formula One championship six ways to Sunday. Hamilton tied it up, or won, clinched the title with two races to go, but what I saw as far as a driving championship went was legitimate. NASCAR, again, with the four-way tie and playoff system, is an illegitimate and phony title system. It reeks, it is disgusting, and it's shameful for the sport of stock car racing. Now, I won't lavish these same negative adjectives on all of the drivers that have won championships since 2004. They are not at fault. They don't decide how the championship is decided. They don't decide the formats. They nearly race under the format that is decided in the offices of Daytona Beach by people that don't know a whole hell of a lot about their core race fan. They drove them off. They started driving them off about 15 years ago, and they're still doing it. I watch this Miami circus every year, and it makes me sick to my stomach. This is the most illegitimate piece of junk way to decide a phony title championship I've ever seen in my life. Why I torture myself looking at this race every year, I don't know. I didn't watch the truck race. I didn't watch the Xfinity race. The only reason I really watched the cup race because I happened to be in front of the television. I did not stay in front of the television in order to watch the cup race. Let's make that perfectly clear. I don't have any enjoyment over watching this. I long for the Latford system. Would you rather have Matt Kenseth win it with two races to go? Yes, 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 a billion times yes. I would rather do that because it's legitimate. I don't care if Matt Cl Kenseth clinched it by 400 points, by 300 points. It was legitimate. What we see now with the four-way tie is not. Let's broaden the picture. Matt Kenseth clinched it in 2003 with a few races to go. This is the exact same system that gave us the 1992 classic season finish. One of the best races, most historic races in NASCAR history, the Hooters 500. It was the same system. That's what makes it magical. The World Series does not always go seven games. Sometimes it goes four games and the series is done. That's how sports plays out. That's what makes it so special. If you artificially manufacture baseball to where the World Series just goes magically seven games every single year, it's a phony World Series title. You don't blame the teams or the players, but I would blame Major League Baseball. I don't blame the teams or the drivers since 2004, but I do blame NASCAR. This is a crock. I cannot stand it. They got my ratings point by watching the television yesterday because I just happened to see it. This is not a must-see event. It's horrible. I am a fan of the Bob Latford system. This is auto racing. It does not play two playoffs. We don't have two different teams playing in one city in an entire league with games simultaneously across the USA. This is not Major League Baseball. This is not the NFL. Stop trying to make it like that. If I wanted to watch football, I'd be watching football. I don't care about football. I don't care about baseball. I care about auto racing. My heroes, they drive fast cars. They got big engines in them. If it's played with a stick or a ball, 
I got no idea about it, nor do I care, nor do I follow it. I don't, I don't care about it. My athletes, the guys I respect, the guys I look up to, they put the hammer down, got their right foot planted on the floor. They're going through a corner. They're not sure if they're going to make it out alive on the other side. Those are my heroes. Those are my guys. I liked this sport growing up because it was different from all the other sports. Stop trying to make it be like the other sports. Now, I've been complaining about this since before I was on the air. As long as this show has existed with Speedway Report or Motor Week Live, you can find a recording of me bitching and moaning about this stupid chase or playoff systems. This is a circus. This was a joke. I don't get it. I was so mad watching this yesterday, how artificial and phony it is. Uh, Kyle Busch won his other championship. He missed half the season, but we magically crafted a way to get him into the playoffs, and he won the title. Now, Kyle Busch is one of the best drivers this sport has ever seen. How many championships would he have won without the system? There's no way of knowing. I've gone over this with Jimmy Johnson. He's won all of his during a playoff or a chase system. He's got seven titles. Maybe without the playoffs, Jimmy Johnson would have 10. I don't know. Maybe he would have zero. There's no way of telling. But this system does not crown a legitimate champion. I love you guys driving it. I'm still a fan of race car drivers, but this is a joke. It is pathetic. It is sad. It's, it's oh my God, I just cannot stand it. It's so heartbreaking to watch NASCAR now compared to what I grew up on. This is miserable. It is terrible. I will keep beating this drum till somebody, somebody in Daytona Beach hears me and decides to bring this Latford system back. It may never happen in my lifetime, but I'll go into my grave knowing that I did the best I could for the sport. Watch old film. Watch, watch old YouTube videos of races before 2004 my goodness, there was double, triple the people there. Does anybody wonder where everybody went? Where? What happened? Where are you guys? Where's the fans? What's going on? The first Chase Championship was in 2004. Don't we ever make the connection here? I have for years. It's pretty obvious you've watered down a championship. What Richard Petty and Dale Earnhardt did was magic with their seven titles. Cale Yarborough and Daryl Waltrip with their three. This is the most revered stock car series championship on the planet. Or was. This means nothing to me now. Sunday afternoons growing up was must-see TV. I watched the race, won the tracks, made their own TV deal, and it was on a different network every Sunday. I remember when some races weren't on TV. I remember when very few were on TV. I remember watching them a week or two later in a in an abbreviated segment on ABC's Wide World of Sports. I sat through a lot of cliff diving and sumo wrestling to see the NASCAR Winston Cup Grand National Race. What I watched, I respected I wanted to see it. I revered it. It was honored of me to see it. I, it's, it was magical. I watched this circus yesterday at Homestead, Miami. You have just lost me. You have lost your core fan. NASCAR has done so many mistakes to shoot themselves in the foot, and they keep making a joke out of this championship and this cup. Uh, you know, I don't care who sponsors the series, whatever you want to do about that. That's just a business deal. But you're deciding a championship that means nothing. It is pathetic. It is phony. It is sad. Uh, I, 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 this is where your ratings are. This is where your sponsorship has disappeared to. This is where your empty seats are. This is where the media doesn't cover you anymore because they can't afford to go because the sponsorship isn't there because the crowds aren't there. It's all affecting one another. When this television deal is contract is done with NASCAR and the next one gets renewed and it, and it will get renewed. There will be another TV package following this one. NASCAR will be receiving pennies on the dollar. And the gentlemen that were in charge that put all the money in their pockets, millions of dollars into their pockets because of this TV deal will probably retire and go off scot-free as far as destroying NASCAR and their stock car series. 
They killed the golden goose. This thing was going sky high. It was sky high. There was no stopping it. Oh, yeah, they found a way to stop it. It was awful. It's called playoffs. They don't belong in any form of auto racing. You can have them. I'll have no part of it. I have gone further and further towards IndyCar and short track racing, Formula One racing. Playoffs don't belong in it. It's a shame NHRA does it too because I love drag racing. I love the power. I love the speed. But playoffs have no place in the sport of auto racing. It is just disgusting to watch this deteriorate year after year after year. Oh, and next week we're going to go to Phoenix to settle the title instead of Miami. At least Miami Homestead Speedway <clears throat> rivaled the old Atlanta Motor Speedway before, when it was a true oval before they made it into a quad oval. It ate tires. It's an oval. The racing is at least good, and you have multiple lanes there. The, you know, I'll say Miami is a good racetrack. Phoenix is a flat oval for stock cars. It's a lot like New Hampshire. It sucks for stock cars. But open wheel racing, you got something there. Uh, Indy cars are good at Phoenix. They don't go back there anymore. Stock cars sell a lot of tickets. The racing isn't that great. Uh, modifieds up at and Indy cars up at the mile at New Hampshire. Both good racing, open wheel classes. Anything with a fender, heavy, narrow tires, the racing really isn't that good. We're going to see a worst show next year in Phoenix on the mile. So at least we enjoyed uh, Miami this year as far as the race goes and the passing. Um, now, if we can just do something about these stages, you've got a whole generation of race fans that you're trying to replace the old ones with, and you got it one out of 10 or so that are still sticking around thinking playoffs are a good idea. I'm jumping off Miami right now. Let's circle back to Brazil. I opened up talking about Lewis Hamilton clinched his championship. Miami, good race. I hate the title, but good race. The Brazilian Grand Prix, if you did not see this race yesterday afternoon before uh, the NASCAR Miami finale, you missed a dandy. This was like a good old-fashioned short track race. This was great. Brazil has so much history uh, with you know the home country of Ayrton Senna, just, just a magical place with so much history. Brazil, uh, just in Formula One culture. And we had a great race. I want to talk about uh, Charles Leclerc. He started 14th on the grid. He's a couple-time winner earlier this season in F1. Drove the Ferrari up into the top five. Had a great race going. And then he came together with Sebastian Vettel, his teammate, the two Ferraris. Don't you love it? I love it when teammates take each other out. Basically, I don't root for that, but it makes for a great storyline when you host a radio show podcast like Speedway Report. Uh, Vettel claimed innocence. He crowded uh, Leclerc, clearly went by him. Uh, first, Leclerc went by him, uh, went by Vettel. Vettel go by Leclerc, crowded him. Then they had a suspension failure and a couple of tire failures, and two Ferraris came out of there with DNFs out of Brazil. Uh, I, I always find that interesting of what they're going to say because the team factor really plays into effect in F1 as opposed to other forms of auto racing. Uh, I, I, I'd love to be a fly on the wall this morning over in Italy. <laughs> watch, the, uh, watch the morning meeting here. But Vettel crowded. He, he moved over. He crowded Leclerc clearly. And uh, Vettel was the cause of that. In, in spite of a good driver that he is, he tried to blame Leclerc, but that was uh, all Vettel's fault. And let's give it up for Pierre Gasly, the Frenchman. Drove that uh, Toro Rosso for Red Bull up to second place in a great battle with Lewis Hamilton right there at the finish. This was a dynamite race. Um, and let's talk about Hamilton getting into the back of uh, Alexander Albon, spun out the other Red Bull in this, and uh, Albon was looking for a podium finish as well. But Pierre Gasly finished second, held off Lewis Hamilton's Ferrari, his first career podium. For Gasly ever. Uh, he was so excited about that. I think he was more excited than Verstappen who won the race. This was great watching this kid jump up and down and celebrate his first career podium. The podium is such a big deal in F1. I thought it was fantastic. I was feeling it. I had, I had the feels for Gasly. He did a great job. The Frenchman did for that Red Bull. And it was, I think it was a bigger deal for him to finish second 
than it really was for Verstappen to win. Now, on paper, obviously not, but Gasly, gosh, he did a great job. And, you know, how do you – we all like an underdog, first-time winners or first-time, you know, ever finishing that high up. I thought it was uh, fantastic, a great drive for Gasly. And I want to – before we leave tonight, I want to pay our respects to Lou Judson, a uh, former member of the Southern New York Racing Association – who uh, we lost since our last show. I grew up uh, up in Connecticut going to the Danbury Fairgrounds, uh, watching the guys of the Southern New York Racing Association, and we lost another one. Uh, time marches on. Uh, the facility's been closed for, what, close to 38 years, close to 40 years, and I guess we're all getting older. And uh, rest in peace, Lou Judson. Any member of the SNYRA always seems like family to me. We'll give our respects to Dave Despain and MotorWeek Illustrated with our Racer of the Week. No Paul McKeever. I'm not giving it to Burt Myers for his tire incident at the North-South Shootout. However, I'm going to give a tip to the hat and a Racer of the Week. Not to who you, have, you know, the, the usual champions or suspects, as most people might think, but there, some of them that know me well might be saying, he's not going to give it to any NASCAR titleist. Well, you're right. I'm not. Racer of the week. I'm going to give it to the Frenchman who finished second in Brazil, Pierre Gasly, his first career podium finish in Formula One. The Frenchman uh, gets the Speedway Report Racer of the week in between our shows please keep up on the sport with speedwayreport.com we've got some stories to read from myself and Rhonda Beck archive always got some good columns coming up and connect in our past podcasts are sure stored there as well hook up with me on social media I'm on Facebook at Speedway Report with Patrick Reynolds also like our racers reunion page on Facebook I am on Twitter at Speedway Report and at Speedway Pat and look for these shows at racersreunion.com in the forum. Like I said at the top of the show, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Speedway Report. Uh, thanks to everyone on the Facebook Live feed for joining the conversation during the show tonight. I'll catch up with you guys shortly. As someone asked me earlier, I can see that, but I choose not to just to stay focused on uh, the show. And I just kind of circle back around to you a little bit later on. I want to thank all of the military past and present for the freedoms we enjoy uh, as Americans in our daily life, including the simple things like bench racing right here on a Monday night. Freedom is not free. And a veteran paid that bill for us. To all of the men and women who are defending freedom and watching Speedway Report, take care of yourselves and come home soon. A special salute to the teachers, school staff, firefighters, police officers, and paramedics in our own communities. They are quiet and modest heroes every single day. God bless and thank you. You have been watching Speedway Report from the shores of Lake Norman in Race City, USA, Mooresville, North Carolina. Please like our Facebook page, Speedway Report with Patrick Reynolds, and follow me on Twitter at Speedway Pat. Now, if you're watching us live on Facebook, head on over to the Drag Racing List page because Drag List Live is coming up in just a few minutes. Bill, John, and Barb. Got all the straight line talk over there. So go and check out our Racers Reunion family. We'll be back live here on Facebook next week, Monday, November the 25th. We will look at USAC Midgets in California, local short track racing, and a preview of the big Thanksgiving racing weekend. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next week. <laughs>